Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center coming to you today from Stoddard Hill State Park and boat launch. Uh, you can see the water right behind me. This is uh, a little cove off of the Thames River. Before we get into the program today, let me remind everyone tomorrow at 10 o'clock we will be doing the second of our Women Leaders in Conservation series. So we will be talking to Jerry Griswold from White Memorial uh, and learning all about how a White Memorial was established and founded and lots of great information there. So make sure you tune in tomorrow at 10 o'clock and that will be on uh, Zoom and Facebook Live. So if you don't catch us on Zoom, you can watch it on Facebook Live. We are limited to just, to just 100 people on Zoom. So if you want to sign up for that, just go to uh, Meg's Point Nature Center Programs, um, megspointnaturecenter.org. You can go to the calendar and it will give you directions to how to sign up for that program. But if not, you can watch us on Facebook Live as well. All right, so we are in Ledyard, Connecticut at uh, Stoddard Hill uh, State Park. Let me flip the camera around here. We're going to show you. There's the entrance uh, driveway there. This is a very small park, uh, 55 acres, and five acres of it is this little uh, marsh cove right here. There is some marshland, uh, now it's behind me. You can see it's a very high tide today because the water is up above the sign. This is a carry-in carry boat launch. Uh, as you can see, that is the entranceway to the Thames River. So at high tide, no boats are getting through. At low tide, uh, canoes and kayaks, maybe a small uh, motorboat. There is a speed limit, six miles an hour, uh, out on the, the river right there. So um, you're not going to be taking any uh, any speed boats really in and out of this state park. All right, let's let's just head right over to the trail. We're going to be going up up Stoddard Hill. Not a lot of information about this park on our uh, website on the DEP website. So I'll tell you what I do know. Wait a minute. What I'm noticing already. A lot of whitewash all over the place here. On the rocks, a small tree up above. And some bunker. There's uh, three bunker, four bunker heads, five. So some birds have been picking up uh, the bunker and eating them probably in this tree right here So that's pretty cool even way up the Thames River. We're have, finding the bunker Everywhere I go it seems that we find the bunker All right, so again not a lot of information the, again 55 acres and uh, about 48 of it is uh, is open hiking trails. There is a small section uh, down along the railroad track. So we're, we're going to look at the railroad track. On the other side of this cove, there's a, a small parcel of land that's considered the Stoddard Hill Reserve because you can't really get out there. Oh, something else to look at. Let's see if anybody recognizes the bark on this tree. Zoom out there. Look at that. Oh, there's a little bird flitting around behind me. So I've talked about the hackberry out on our Cedar Island Trail. And here's a young hackberry covered in uh, invasive species. There's uh Multiflora rose growing all over it, but there we are a, a Hackberry up here. There's a sassafras some nice oak trees A 
All right, so we're going to get up here and just take a look at the railroad track, and then we're going to head up the hill. So this is a, a main path that I just took out here, but this is just, I believe, uh, a path made by fishermen to get out. This railroad is active, so you want to be cautious. Oh, a kingfisher. Kingfisher's flying up the river over there. So we're looking at the Thames River. I hear the kingfisher. I'm seeing a lot of trash. This is the Thames River. Over across the river there is the uh, Mohegan Casino. If anybody has any questions, you can ask them at any time. I'll try and answer them as we go. And then downriver over here, we're looking at, there's a big ship down there and a float of, uh, float of ducks, a lot of, seeing lots of flashes of white. So those could be a bufflehead or hooded merganser. They're very far away, so I'm just seeing black and flashes of white. Okay. So again, this is the Thames River. It is a, not a very large river, not a very long river. Um, I think it's only like 15 miles long, 36 feet deep. Um, and at the widest, it's like 126 feet wide. So we're gonna go back. I don't believe that this is actually a trail although it might be, but we're going to go back and get onto the main trail and head up Stoddard Hill. Stoddard Hill is 183 feet tall, and it was originally a Native American lookout in times of trouble. Uh, this was a lookout point. I should have showed you back there, right behind me. Maybe we'll see it from the, from the lookout, was um, Fort Shantock which used to actually be a state park and it was given to the Mohegan uh, tribe when they were established or recognized. I, I really hate that word, that a tribe has to be recognized by the federal government to actually be a tribe, but uh, that's what it's called. Um, they recognized the tribe and, and they got part of their reservation was Fort Chantock which was a fort um, throughout the, their history. Okay, so here's a little picnic area here, and we're gonna head up, up the hill. Now the Stoddard family was a well-known family here in Ledgerd, one of the first settlers, and they had a farm in the area and their family cemetery is located here on the park grounds. Any questions? So thank you everybody for uh, putting where you're messaging from. I always like to see that and I see someone is watching from Florida. Bet you have some great weather in Florida today. Here, it's supposed to get up into the mid 40s. We're not at that temperature right now. I'd say we're, we're just about 40 degrees right now. So we're coming up on the cemetery. This is a nice, a nice wooded, there goes a moth. That tells you it's a little bit warm. There's a moth flying by. 
All right. Oh, I see Saybrook, Madison, Haddam. Lots of, lots of people tuning in today. So as we get up here, look at that beautiful rock formation behind the cemetery. So again, this was a family cemetery. Uh, farmers, colonial farmers, when they first settled an area, you know, they would live generations on the farm and they would pick a, a section of the farm uh, to be their, their family cemetery, usually on a hillside, top of a hill. Uh, this is a nice little, they, they did some work on this one more than I, I often see on colonial uh, family plots. This has a really nice stone wall. Many times they don't put this nice stone wall around it. So there you can see Hubbard Stoddard. Um, that's 1866. We have uh, died 1808. James Stoddard. 1799. There's another James Stoddard, 1845. Oh, unfortunately, there's a broken, uh, broken stone over there. So there are some old uh, Wow, this person lived to 76. That's pretty old for 1813. And look, in the back, as you look through here, there are lots of just very small stones. So we're probably going back much older at that point. And these, those there, I don't even see the dates are, are worn right off of those. But there's a military veteran uh, badge there. I think that's what that is. All right. So, again, this was the Stoddard Family Cemetery. And I believe our trail is going to bring us up, up there. So let's see, see if we can get there. I love these mixed wooded foresty areas. And look at the view of the river. Now, I imagine in the, in the summer, well, I know in the summer because I've been here in the summer. Um, I grew up right on the other side of the river from here, so this all this mixed wood. There's lots of different kinds of tree. I'm seeing birch, seeing, well, I'm not seeing any live sassafras. I'm seeing some dead sassafras. Sassafras is uh, one of those transitional trees. It's not going to be in the climax forest. When you get all the big oak trees, the sassafras aren't going to survive being shaded out by oak trees. Um, so I do see some sassafras, looks like the trail split here. Let's go this way. Here's a sassafras that's down. So again, not a lot of information on the, uh, on this park, on our website. It was acquired by the state of Connecticut in... Uh, 1954. Wow, look at the, that rock tumble there. That jumble of rocks. Looks like a great place for mountain goats. Or copperheads. Copperheads like rocky areas like that. You don't have to worry about that at this time of year, though. All right. Going to continue along the trail here. Let me just take a second, see if we have any. Uh, can you tell us where this is? Stoddard Hill State Park in Ledgerd. Stoddard Hill State Park and boat launch. There's a boat launch here. 
If you look it up on the website, you're probably going to, on the deep website, you're probably going to see the boat launch more than the, than the park. It's listed under other parks. And do we have any other questions? Sandstone tombstones wear out. Yes, they do. And you could see all that red stone back there was, was the sandstone. Um, <laughs> Carolyn says tribes uh, recognized is better than ignored. That's true. I feel like, though, when you say somebody's recognized, it's like, okay, now we recognize your existence where we didn't before. Where would I find bear dens? Anywhere and everywhere. So talking to the state biologists, and I'm going to try and set up an interview um, with one of our state biologists that does a lot of the uh, tagging of bears and he monitors them in the winter. Their dens sometimes are not really a den. It's just like a, a hollow under a, under a branch. So look right here. If there was a little hollow under this right here, a bear would den right there, just a hollow under a rock. They would just curl up and go to sleep. So you think of a bear den as, a, as an actual entrance in a, and a, a cave. Not really. The den sometimes is just a, a dent in the ground. All right, so I haven't seen any trail blazes. It looks like there's sort of a path that goes up this way. And sort of a path that continues this way. But this park is so small, they haven't blazed any trails at all. That might be something we, we, we might want to do here, though. Huh? I just noticed. Look at this. The bark on this tree. This is all fresh. Something has hit the tree here. I wonder what that could be. And it looks like up here, these are older, but something has rubbed against the tree. And it could just be people, because this is along a path, or it could be an animal. All right, let's uh, talk trail safety. One of the things in the fall when you're hiking a trail covered in leaves like this, it is a bit slippery. I feel, I'm feeling a little slipping on my feet. So you really want to be cautious. Get some nice boots with some good tread. But even with that, because of all these leaves, one leaf on top of another, it just slips under your feet. Now see right there, that could be a bear den. That would be a much more substantial den than the ones I was just talking about. But I'm just gonna go over, there's a little indent there. I'm just gonna hold this up so you can take a look at what's inside there. I can't see that. All right. Uh, Rosemary asks, what bush is that that's still green? Um, I think you're talking about the mountain laurel which is right here. And if you just notice behind me here, there are some ferns uh, that are still green. Oh, uh, and I'm just, I just completely blanked on what kind of fern this is. Um, that's, the, I, I'm pretty sure that's the only fern in Connecticut that stays green in the winter, but this is mountain laurel. And mountain laurel provides excellent cover for winter, um, animals. So the deer in my backyard, there's nice mountain laurel groves and the deer will bed down right in the middle of that. That provides cover on a snowy day. It'll sort of create an umbrella for them. And on a windy day, it blocks the wind. So mountain laurel, it's a great cover in the winter for all of the animals. I'm just really fascinated. I love looking at all these. Look at all the rocks here. Now let's take a second because as I look up through these rocks, look how many birch trees are growing right out of the rocks. Almost all of the trees that you see, and except for one or two beech, 
Those are all black birch trees. Birch trees, you know, it's a smaller, faster growing tree than an oak or a maple or even a beech. So they don't need as substantial of a root system and they're able to grow in areas like this. And there's one little white pine right there. All right, let's continue to go up. Oh. Here we have another beech. So beech do keep their leaves, but their leaves turn uh, yellow or orange in the winter. So now I feel like I'm on a trail. Now, not all paths and trails are going to be cleared of leaves in the winter time. That's why you really need to be cautious about wearing shoes and layers. That's another important one. It's not cold right now, but it could easily turn cold um, while I'm out hiking. So I wear layers. Bring an extra coat or a jacket. If you get warm while you're hiking, you just take it off. It's a lot better than getting cold while you're hiking and not having anything to put on. All right, let's see. We have a question. What would mountain laurel, what would eat mountain laurel, not deer? You know, I don't know of anything that eats mountain laurel. It's not very edible apparently because I've never seen animals eating it and you're right the deer don't really like to eat it so nothing really eats it so now we moved into a, another little grove of evergreen these are white pine now we've talked about transitional forests quite a bit and here we're in a transition where we're transitioning from a pine forest actually we're not let's look at this for a second this is interesting none of these white pine there's one big one way down the hill there but these are all young white pine and white pine are not as shade tolerant they're not going to survive all these oak trees and everything taking away their sunlight so quite a few young pine trees here and the the other trees that are growing are not very old either even the oaks that are in this area so this little pine grove they're not going to grow to be mature pine trees okay now i've come up on some houses i thought that this trail circled but i think that it doesn't i think that this is a dead end right into somebody's backyard and it is okay do we have a trail up above us? I do not see one. So we're going to go back and find the circle up. And this looks like it might circle back down to that along the river trail. So I really want to get up to the top to the hill here. Now I did say that I have... Uh, been to this park before but I've never been all the way up to the observation uh, the lookout point I've always been launched canoes and kayaks from here oh this looks like a trail here let's go this way not yeah this is a trail it's not as used because it's covered in leaves but this is a trail so let's hope this brings us to our lookout point Um, I don't see any new questions or comments, so let's just keep going. Now, I have brought you guys to many state parks, forests, now boat launches, recreation areas, whatever it might be. I always say there's so many reasons to come back. The reason I want to come back here is I would love to launch a boat, take you out canoeing or kayaking from here. 
Take a look at this tree for a sec. Remember from past programs, and if you've missed any of the past programs, you can see them at megspointnaturecenter.org in the virtual learning center. But we've got low branches, which means this tree grew without competition. It grew in the sunlight. So those branches were able to branch off very low and get sun from the beginning. Okay, as I was saying, the uh, um, hold on, I'm just reading. My dad has a comment about uh, could smaller animals like foxes, etc., be living in those? So yes, back at those jumble of rocks, you could have. Uh, even woodchucks and groundhogs, most people think of them as being in the wide open, but smaller animals could use it, coyote, fox, even a raccoon. Raccoons don't hibernate for the winter, but on a really cold day, they're looking for a place like that to curl up. So, um, I've brought you to many parks and always had great reasons to come back. Um, and I realize I haven't really given any cons for state parks. So I think to be a little more objective, we're gonna see if there are things that we don't necessarily, I don't necessarily like about a state park. And I hope my bosses are fine with that. Um, but one of the things here I'm noticing, and I already mentioned it, there are no blazes for the trails. It's very hard to keep people on a trail. And that's the thing, we tell people all the time that we want people to stay on a trail. But if you can't see the trail, it makes it much more difficult to stay on the trail. Now, if you imagine, most of these small trees would not have been here when the Native Americans were here. And definitely not when the settlers were here because most of Connecticut was clear cut. These are all very small trees that I'm looking down on, relatively, which means when a Native American were up here, if there were larger trees, which there could have been that the settlers cut down, uh, you would still have a nice view from this point. The great part about this and why it makes such a nice lookout hill, it gets you really close to the river, right? Look at how close we are to the river. So it really gives you control. You can see what's going on on the other side of the river. Look down at all these rocks. If you remember what the rocks look like from down below, they were gray. When you look at them up here, they're covered in lichen. And that's because this is where they're getting some sunlight. We're down below, you were looking up and they're, and they're not getting any light from there. So. Bob says, very small park with limited parking, hikers, uh, if the boat launch is heavily used, a con, yes. So again, the park is only 55 acres. It is primarily used as a boat launch and it's mostly fishermen. It's not really a recreational, like people just canoeing and kayaking boat launch. There's a lot of fishermen that launch from here to fish on the Connecticut River. We'll get striped bass this far up, you know, Norwich is is uh, what, a couple of miles in that direction there. So this is where, and I see a question that wants to know where we are. We are at Stoddard Hill State Park in Ledger. Um, so your parking is going to be taken up very quickly by boaters and primarily by boaters. So not a lot of parking and the trails are not blazed. So those are my two cons for this. Oh, look at this. Notice everything is green, covered in lichen. This one little spot is not. And I would say obviously that this is where people stand to get their best photo ops. Just look at what your look at your view from here. Just pan slowly along here.
it is and this is going to be the biggest pro for this park other than being able to get your boat right out on the Thames River is the view from this point very cool And I believe that's Gia from the Nature Center asking if we went by the cemetery, and we did. Saw 1700s through 1800s dates in there, so very old cemetery. And I think some of them were even before. I think there were some 16s. Uh, if my reading, if I remember what I read about the uh, Stoddard family, they settled this area in the 1600s. All right. And the cemetery should be right around the corner over here. I'm loving all these rocks, though. Oh, look at that. There's a tree that came down. And I'm guessing... Ooh. Look at this. This rock... Look how worn it is, right? And this little pit here, that wore away a lot more. Almost like someone did that. That's curious. I was going to say, though, this tree probably came down because um, all the rocks it's growing in and around probably didn't give it enough of a root depth. And maybe Bob can chime in on that one. So, and my mom says, reminding everybody, off to the right is Brewster's Point. It was one of the first uh, trading areas on the river, which would be north of me, up in that direction there. A little bit for, whoop, let's see, right in that direction. A little bit further up the, uh, the Thames River. So... Very, very cool. Again, a very mixed wood here. There's no tree that I'm seeing that's dominant, except the, the birch trees that were growing out of the rocks. There's a big mix of trees, which I like to see. And we're coming up on a tree that looks like it's got some serious damage. Wow, so not only does it have this massive uh, rot out of the middle and then this knot look at that that knot oh, can I zoom out anymore no out there we go no I can't. so this big gnarled knot here looks like it's cut off at the bottom and then rot in there and then here this looks like a buttress here on uh, um, those trees in the rainforest which I can't think of right now but then we've got this rope-like scar, which I very often see from a lightning strike, a spiraling rope-like scar that goes all the way around the tree. That's some serious damage to this oak. All right. Let's continue along here. And we'll see if this is the view of the cemetery that I think we're going to get. And there's another little worn out spot right there. Actually, that looks different. This is a different color of stone here. So that's a different, uh, looks like a different type of stone. And that's why it's wearing different wear pattern there. But right there, you can see a little bit. The stone wall of the cemetery is right down there. And I imagine that they wouldn't have tried to um, put the cemetery up on the top here uh, because all of the rocks, I think it would be pretty difficult to, uh, to dig a grave on the top. 
All right, let me get caught up with our questions and comments. Ooh, we've got somebody is watching from Ontario that grew up near Hammonasset. And Bob says fire damage, maybe. That's what the that's why the trees are small. Good comment there, Bob. Thank you. Uh, because oh, <laughs> look at that. We just spoke about fire damage and there's a bunch of burned uh, although that's much more recent. Um, the Native Americans did burn off large uh, sections of the forest for a few reasons. It gave them a clear view and it created a better habitat for their primary food source. Uh, they would also burn away smaller saplings and let a few big trees grow. Uh, they wouldn't clear the forest with burning just a little bit. There's some greenbrier over there. So the Native Americans were uh, using fire as a management tool long before we were. And I mentioned before that the uh, bunker were everywhere. Here's a bunker head up here. So animals are carrying these bunker off to eat them and uh, leaving them everywhere. Now, you typically think that might be osprey dropping a drop in the bunker, but the osprey left here uh, more than two months ago. Although that, that head didn't look like it was that old, but you still might see them months later. So again, you know, I, I love Connecticut State Park system and I can find a thousand reasons to visit a park over and over again. And even with the, the two cons that we had, I don't think those are really big negatives for this park. This is a beautiful park. The views from up here are just amazing. Looking down towards New London, looking up to, towards Norwich, across the river over there is Montville. This is just a beautiful park. There are lots of great trees to look at. Seeing, you know, mixed oaks, white pine, birch, beech, a few cherry trees scattered. There's a dead tree right in front with some nice woodpecker uh, damage. And we, I've talked about this again in other programs. And if you've missed the other programs, again, you can see them at MegsPointNatureCenter.org in the Virtual Learning Center. But this is a really great sign. We love to see trees like this. And we'll leave them here as long as they're not a hazard. A tree like this is food for a number, not only uh, the woodpeckers that are eating the insects, but it creates a great habitat for the insects. The park we were at today, again, is Stoddard Hill State Park in Ledger. It's a 55 acre state park, has a great boat launch to get you out onto the, the Thames River. Again, it's a carry on boat launch. Uh, maybe a small motor boat could fit under the railroad trestle, but not a lot, not a big boat. And at high tide, you're not getting under the trestle at all. So make sure you check the tide before you come to launch your boat. I just stepped on a rolling twig. Here's a, an oak tree that snapped off and it looks like it blocked the trail. The trail looks like it goes right down there. Ooh, this was a cedar tree. This long straight right here was a cedar tree. Came down a long time ago. And then we've got this oak tree that fell against what looks like a sassafras tree that already had some damage, but that sassafras is not given up. And our trail looks like it goes right down through the midst of all of that. So we're going to circle up and around. And I'm seeing some more. There's another cedar right there that's down. And what is this in front of me? Is this a U? No. Is it? Maybe that's a hemlock that's just really stunted. Not a U, though. 
Wow, and it looks like when this oak came down, it took, uh, what is that? Uh, took that birch tree with it. Wow, look at the damage there. So you see this uh, on a windy day, I would not be standing this close to this much damage. Uh, it's pretty calm right now. But even so, this is not uh, one of the trees that I like to see. This is a hazard right here. I'm going to circle around that one too. Oh, look, on the ground. Those purple, flower, uh, purple leaves right there, that is um, spotted wintergreen. I pointed that out a few times. And it's not in the, it's in the wintergreen family, but it doesn't smell like wintergreen and it doesn't have spots. So I always find that one amusing. All right, I'm sort of way off the path now. We have a choice. We can go down the hill, which kind of looks like there's a path there, or along the hill, which kind of looks like it's a path. I'm not sure we could go down past the cemetery again, but let's continue along the hill here again this hill is 283 feet tall so it does give you a good commanding view and with Fort Shantock across the other side which also had a nice bluff um, that would give you good control of the river on these two points nothing's going to be able to move up and down that river without you seeing it Oh, I'm glad I went this way. Something I'd really hate to see. It's a beautiful flash of color, but this is a really bad thing to have out in our forests. So we're just going to grab our Mylar balloons out of this green briar. Find these everywhere. It's pretty awful. I wonder what this says on it. Hope you are proud. Not sure what this is celebrating, but someone is celebrating by polluting the environment. That's the way I look at it. Ooh, look at this. Look at that beautiful tree. There's a cedar. Obviously, it's not alive, and that's natural. It's not anything that's killing all these cedar trees. Again, cedar trees are a transitional tree. They're going to grow when a they're one of the first trees to grow when a field is allowed to, to go away and become a forest. They're one of the first ones to, to grow. And then obviously then they're going to be the first one to die off. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of down cedar trees. And I see another thing I want to look at ahead of me. Looks like an oak growing around a rock in a really nice formation. These are things that I look for when I'm hiking just something unusual, you know, a tree growing like this. Well, that's a big one. This birch tree, it's a beautiful tree. It's growing on the surface of a big rock there. So that it looks, you can see the roots are spreading out over the rock. And my microphone wire got hooked there. But this, this is just so cool. Here is a hemlock that's uh, gone by there. That one's not survived. Look at this. So this tree grew up next to the rock. And as it grew, it got closer and closer to the rock until it started to grow around the rock. Just wrapped right around it. All right, I'm seeing some whitewash here. Some good branches up there. And then maybe some raccoon scat. You look right there. Looks like it could be raccoon. That could also be fox. Maybe even a possum. Because scat changes depending on what the animal's eating. So sometimes it gets pretty hard to identify scat. I'm going to pivot back around here and show you. Look at this. This is absolutely the coolest thing to me. I just love how this tree was growing just fine straight up. And then... It 
came in contact with the rock and grew around the rock. This down here hasn't even started wrapping around the rock yet. But look how that just grows. It's like it's creeping right across, right across the rock. It's just gonna keep growing out as the tree gets bigger. This is just cool. All right, there's a big, big pro for Stoddard Hill State Park right there. All right, now I'm completely off the trail. I see the cemetery so I can keep my orientation. Not that you really need to with the Thames River right there, but. And there's the boat launch. Looks like a DOT truck is taking their lunch break right now at the boat launch. So let's continue. I'm seeing, so this is a good vantage point. Let's stop here and just scan. Oh, look at that. This is fur. And that looks like it comes from scat. So some animal has eaten another animal and gone and left it, left it there on the rock. All right. As we scan the forest from up at this vantage point, you see the oaks that fell this year. We know it's this year because the leaves are still attached. There's big branches. There's, let's see, am I pointing at it? Right there, there's two big branches there of oak. As we scan across, there's a big branch of oak there, another big branch there, uh, one behind over there. Another one over here, another one over here. So if you think of these big windstorms we've had this past year, they've knocked a lot of big branches. They've pruned these oak trees. Uh, now, these branches that we're looking at, they're large. If that was off of another tree, it would probably be like a half or a quarter of the tree. But because these are big oak trees, it's not gonna, deter the oak tree or kill the oak tree. They're still gonna be able to grow and get bigger. All right, let's see what else there is to see around here. Let me stop and see if we've got any questions, comments. Uh, somebody says graduation last year for the balloon, probably. They should be outlawed, the balloons, yeah. Um, curiosity question, what state department would be responsible to come and clear and clean trails, etc.? That's the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, which is who I work for. The state parks are under, under our purview. Small parks like this are connected to a larger unit. Um, and the DEP you know, has to spread out. So there's not a one person assigned to this park, which is probably why it, it may take a little while to, to cover that. Now look, there's a mushroom that's gone by from, from last year. Look at that. You gotta look at the mushroom. Actually, that looks really familiar. I wonder if that's one of those uh, chicken of the woods uh, mushrooms. It's pretty cool. Bob, do you know mushrooms? It's gone by, but there's another chunk over there. All right, we're going to continue to work our way downhill here. Past. Oh, look at, look at here. So see the color of these oaks? That could be from a year ago. This is from this past season. Look at the, the difference in the leaves. And this one is much older. So. And it's from a different tree. That one over there looks like a black oak. This looks like, I'm not sure what oak, but it's a different oak. It's like a post oak almost.
Bob doesn't know a lot about mushrooms. We actually were looking to get someone to talk about mushrooms. I have a couple of contacts that we're reaching out for for an upcoming mushroom program. So look for that. Um, probably in March, we're going to be doing our plants, a series of uh, plant lectures on Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock. Right now, uh, tomorrow's program at 10 is going to be Jerry Griswold talking about White Memorial, which is not a state park. It's a uh, sort of a conservation land trust, but they do a lot. So look for that program tomorrow at 10. And again, you can watch it on Zoom. You have to sign up ahead of time on Zoom or on Facebook Live 10 o'clock tomorrow. That's part of our Women Leaders in Conservation. That was a brother and sister, really, for White Memorial, but we're going to learn all about what they did to protect and preserve our open spaces. Actually, some of the land that they set aside was for state parks. So White Memorial itself is not a state park, but the Whites set aside land that eventually became a state park, I believe, and we'll find out tomorrow. And we're back to the trail. Now, generally, I have a pretty good sense of direction, um, but that's something else you should consider when you're out hiking. Um, keep track of where you are. Keep your Try and do things to keep your bearings. If you have a compass, many people don't know how to use compasses anymore because of cell phones. All right, now, if you don't want to do that, that big hike that we did, if you only want to take a, uh, a one minute hike, this is, this is the uh, observation from just above the, the parking lot. So that's pretty cool, huh? You're right here. And right there, that, that's the trestle. That's why you can't launch big boats and you can't launch at low tide, at high tide. Because right now, uh, you wouldn't be able to get any boat under there. Okay, again, I will continue to do these programs Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock. Oh, there's a whole flight of ducks. I wish I could identify them by their whistling sound, but looking by the wing pattern, it looks like golden eye. A whole flight of golden eye, looks like about eight, just took off and are flying up the river. And they had a really nice uh, whistling pattern with their wings as they took off. So as happened yesterday, um, I only have one staff person right now, so occasionally I'll have to uh, to take a day off here or there just to get other things done at the nature center. But I'm planning on doing these programs Tuesday through Friday at 11. And you can look for programs uh, on Saturdays at 10 o'clock pretty much from now. Uh, we're looking at planning uh, March for plants and then April because of Earth Day we'll be doing uh, programs on the environment. So look for all of those programs coming up. Many of them will be Zoom and you can sign up. Uh, if you go to the calendar, it will give you instructions on signing up for the program uh, that you want. But make sure you look into that if you're interested in any of the Zoom programs. But the Zoom programs should also be on Facebook Live. We have the capability of connecting right to Facebook Live. So we'll be doing that. So again, thank you all for tuning in. This is Ranger Russ signing off from Stoddard Hill State Park in Ledger, Connecticut. We'll see you next time.